You won't believe it, but today we're making a cookie. Actually, we're making cookies. The most important ingredient in this recipe is this. Cinderella's wheels, also known as a Hokkaido pumpkin or curry squash. Sweet, nutty and firm with edible skin. What more could you ask for? Of course, using this type of pumpkin is optional, but extremely necessary. To start, we make a quick and simple, but not ordinary pumpkin puree. Wash it, then toppy and taily. Dissect the carriage with a sharp blade. Look at that, pumpkin guts. They can be used for making pumpkin stock or growing more pumpkins. Wow. For this, we don't need them, so they go in the bin. <gasps> Scoop out the insides until you have a clean piece of pumpkin. Like I said, the skin's edible, so don't remove it. A lot of the magic is in the skin. Choppy choppy chop as fine as you can. The finer you cut it, the quicker it cooks and the better your puree. And of course, your cookies. Lube up a deep pot or pan with neutral oil. Add the pumpkin, then start cooking on medium-high heat, moving it around continuously. Close the vessel with a lid so it cooks quick from all sides. Don't let it caramelize. If it gets a bit tanned, then add a tiny bit of water. Should take about 8-10 to 10 minutes and start to break up. Blend it in a jug blender or whatever, but make sure it's smoothish. To get it extra smoothie, pass it through a sieve into a clean bowl. You should now have a super sexy, sweet and smooth, simple pumpkin puree. As is, you could feed it to your kid or dog, but make sure to chill it down first. Cover with plastic wrap to avoid the skin forming, then pop it in the fridge till fully chilled. Meanwhile, we make another simple little thing called a thick custard. Simple, but not boring. Cream goes in, cornstarch, cream cheese, sugar, flour, fresh or fake vanilla, but fresh is best of course, some egos. Grab some of that frighteningly good pumpkin puree even if it's still a little bit hot. Milkman's milk, and blend it to combine like old times. Place the pan on medium heat and start whisking. We don't care if it gets dizzy. Keep going till it bubbles and thickens. Remove from the heat, then pass through a sieve into a clean bowl, making sure it's also smoothie. Same same, cover with plastic wrap and chill in the fridge. Quick little topping to make our stuff pretty and extra tasty. Zest an orange with a fine grater, then get it into a small pan. Juice the same orange, making sure not to get any pips in it. You don't want orange trees growing out of strange places now, do you? Sugar goes in. Grate some pumpkin. Skin on. I like using the fine side of a box grater, but go with the coarse if you prefer it <coughs> rough. Great, great, great. Then into the pan with its mates. Cook on medium high. Let it simmer until it becomes syrupy and most of the liquid is gone. Stir often to avoid burn, disappointment, and tears <laughs> before chilling down in a clean bowl covered with plastic wrap. A cookie without frosting is a pussy without hair. Cute, but not cuddly and out of fashion. In a bowl goes chilled pumpkin puree, cream cheese, and the kilo of America's favorite drug, powdered sugar. Mix that stuff until fully incorporated into Frosting Federation. Cover and chill in the fridge. Before we get to the most important part, toast some pumpkin seeds in the oven, set to 170 degrees Celsius or 338 degrees Fahrenheit for 7 minutes. It's optional but necessary if you want the best results. Out they come and set aside for later. Finally, the cookie dough makes an appearance. Room temp butter goes in, confectioners or powdered sugar, whole eggs, black strap-on molasses, milk from a cow, salt from the earth, that holy pumpkin puree, fresh vanilla seeds or essence if you must, a finely grated orange zest, a must, non-negotiable, paddle attachment and turn on the mixer. At first, stuff will look kinda strange and split, beat it long enough and it comes together again. Grated pumpkin goes in, along with some chopped pecan nuts. Give it a little stir through until fully incorporated. For the dry stuff, sifted flour and baking powder. Ground ginger, nutmeg, gets grated on a fine grater. Fall not falling without nutmeg, so don't skip it. Good old cinnamon gets the same treatment, but you can use pre-ground too. Where's all spice? Well, with all the other spices of course. Whisk it all together until well combined. Add the dry to the wet and paddle attachment again. Give it a quick but careful mix, taking care not to get flour everywhere. Once done, it should look like a very thick cake batter that supports its own weight. Get it into a clean bowl, then cover and refrigerate for an hour. Meanwhile, two options for baking. A tray of course, lined with a silicone baking mat like this. Or good old baking paper. Our custard is now set and we need to whip it up a bit. Whisk by hand so it looks like a thick smooth cream. Don't whip out the hand blender though, as tears will follow. <laughs> Once smoothie, get it into a pastry bag or any other bag for that matter. Don't forget to taste this stuff as you go along. You deserve every little bit of flavor coming your way. Snip the end of the bag and put it aside. Scoop 50 grams or however much you want really of your cookie dough. The dough is pretty sticky, so oil up your hands and tools. 
Make sure all the dough pieces are equal in size and place them onto a lined tray. Chill for 5 minutes then flatten them out like this. Spread out so they don't touch. You will need a few trays or do it in batches. Pipe a generous amount of pumpkin custard into the center of the cookies. Go quite close to the edges to make sure the cookies are fully loaded. With oiled hands, make another cookie disc and place them on top of the filling. Close the cookies up by pinching together the edges. Once closed up, you can correct the shape a bit and flatten them slightly by patting down carefully. Increase your oven temp to 180 degrees Celsius or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. Chill the cookies for 10 minutes, then bake for about 20 minutes or until golden brown. Make sure to turn the tray halfway through so they bake evenly. Using the same dough, we could also make other versions. Shape the dough the same as before, but do not add the custard filling or close it up. We'll get to this one in a bit. For the simplest version, we make a large, flat, crispy cookie. No matter which type you're going for, chill them down completely on the tray when they come out of the oven. If you've done it well, the cookies should be soft and cakey in the middle or completely crispy for the flat one. The stuffed cookie will have plenty of bounce with a delicious creamy custard center. These are all okay as they are, but we don't do okay on this channel now, do we? Frost your custard cookie with pumpkin cream cheese frosting. Top with plenty of confit pumpkin and roasted pumpkin seeds. Now that's a real cookie right there, Jenny. But what about a whoopy cookie? Custard up a small plain half with a generous amount of pumpkin custard. Hide some pumpkin confit inside. Then close that bad boy up with more custard and another cookie half. Press down gently, but don't bite it yet. We need to dip it in some toasted pumpkin seeds first. Round the outside, round the outside, like two trailer park girls and all that. The only thing left to do now is eat these. Mr. Plain and Crispy is good for a cup of coffee or vegan milk. <laughs> but I came here for a real cookie, and the real cookie is what I'll get. A big bite. Hey, boy. Haven't had a cookie that juicy since 2001. Take a ride through a galaxy of cookies. Try not to get lost. And before we all cry, I think it's time to go and watch this video on how to make a real cake. Thanks for watching. As always, me and this guy, love you long time. Bye bye.